Hey, and welcome back developers. And today we're going to create an Autogen GPT, sort of. If we ask ChatGPT or probably any model about Autogen, it has no idea because it wasn't trained on the knowledge of what Autogen was and Autogen came out after a certain date. And Autogen is great at orchestration and creating agent workflows, allowing to have all these conversations between different AI agents to perform different tasks. And as the older it gets, it grows more and more and it gains more knowledge and we can do more things with Autogen. And somebody new coming on, what if they needed help or needed some guidance on writing some Autogen code? Well, today we're gonna create a model to have knowledge about Autogen using Langchain, which is gonna give it the knowledge and store in what's called a vector database. This basically gives the model context or the knowledge about Autogen. And how we're gonna do this is we're gonna use a Langchain tool called Git Tool. And this is gonna get the GitHub repository for Autogen. And then we're gonna add that into the vector database for context for the LLM. And then once we do that, we can ask questions about Autogen to the model. And for instance, here, I asked a question about what is Autogen, give me a good summary and it printed out all of this information about Autogen. I also asked the model to create a group chat involving three total agents, two being an assistant agent and one being a user. And I gave it a question I wanted to ask the agents and it created this Python code for me. We have a fair amount to cover, so let's get into it. So the first thing we need to do is create a new project. Once you've created that, create another directory called docs. So you can just right click your project, go to new and then directory and then call it docs. Now there are two ways that we can use the Langchain tool to get all of the text files from their GitHub. The way I'm gonna do it is I actually cloned all of the GitHub repo inside of this docs directory. Open up your terminal and I just made sure that I'm inside of the project and then I wanna be inside the docs directory. So you can type CD space docs and now I'm gonna be inside of the docs directory. The next thing is to write the command to clone the repo. So if you go to Autogen's GitHub, which will be in the description, on their main page, there's this green code button. If you click this, there will be this github.com Microsoft Autogen.git link. Click the symbol beside it to copy the URL, go back into your IDE, and you'll type in git clone, and then paste that in. And once you press enter, it's gonna take a little while but as on the left side here, I have all of the files from their GitHub. The next thing is there are a lot of requirements for this. A lot of them come from just a few of the different packages, but I went ahead and created the requirements.txt file, which you'll have whenever this video comes out. And then all you need to do, if you clone this repository or you just take that requirements.txt file, you just type in this command, this will install all the requirements needed for this project. The main thing here is we're gonna be using Langchain to take all this Autogen information, all of these files, we're gonna make that as context with the model that we're gonna be using, which I'm just gonna use the 3.5 turbo model because it's super cheap and it's, and it's quick. I don't need to worry about using something local, but you can use a local model by all means. But I'm just using GPT and then now ChatGPT will have the information about Autogen as well. And we're going to be doing that using a vector database. And we're going to be using Meta's vector database called FASS or F-A-I-S-S. -S. So we have all of these Langchain imports. The big one is the Git loader. This is what's going to take all of this GitHub repository and load it as information that we can digest. Now, with all that information, it would be a lot for just a regular database. So we use a vector database. And like I said, we're going to be using FASS. And these embeddings take all of that information and basically make it manageable for the vector database to handle. And, so, and it can understand it. So when we need to ask it something, it can spit it back out what we need. And it does that with something pretty powerful. Like under the hood, what's happening, what's really happening is there's a similarity search. So whenever we ask it a question about something specific about Autogen, like something about group chat, it's gonna find similar information out of all of this information related to group chat and then send that back to us as context so that now the model can give us something meaningful back instead of saying it has no idea what Autogen is. Okay, so what do we need? Well, we need to set our environment OpenAI API key. And then I have the index name equals phase Autogen. And this is basically gonna be the folder we're gonna be creating that's gonna house the phase vector database. Okay, and I have several questions here, which we'll test later, very pretty soon actually. And I have this function called ingest docs, and it just takes in a question. So what's happening here is the first time, if that index, the folder, it doesn't exist, meaning that we haven't loaded all of the Autogen repository into the vector database yet. We take that Langchain tool called Git Loader, give it the path to all of the Autogen repository files. We're gonna load all of those documents into a document object. We're gonna create, we're next gonna create a text splitter. And the reason we need this is there's something called a chunk size. If we have documents that are too big, then it's gonna be hard for it to give us the exact information that we need. And so if we have something 
like chunk size, this means that each document can be a thousand uh, characters in length, then this is more manageable for the vector database and it's more manageable for us to retrieve similar search results by asking it the question that we want. So now we're taking that text splitter and we're splitting the documents that we've loaded up here. We're splitting. Blah, blah. We're going to take the documents that we loaded, split them with a chunk size of 1000 into different document objects. I just have a print statement letting us know how many chunks we created. We instantiate the open AI embeddings. We have a vector store object or we say phase dot from documents. Now we're creating the vector store that's going to hold all those documents. And we do that by saying phase dot from documents, give it the documents and the embeddings. And then we want to save that vector store with that file, that index name that we created above into our directory. So there'll be another directory over here once I load this with our vector database. Now I instantiated the open AI embeddings again. Now we're outside this if statement, right? So we now have the vector database. Whenever you see this code in GitHub, this won't be here. I would have just done this once, but just to keep it in order so you can see how things are done, I just added another variable of OpenAI embeddings here, but there should only be one of these. Now we're going to create a vector store object by loading that vector store that will be created over here. So the LLM we want to use is OpenAI. We have our vector store retriever, which this is what's good at retrieving the similar search results from the vector database because a vector database it doesn't just hold text, right? It's all like floating. It's all like decimal numbers. So this is what's going to use to retrieve similar vectors from the database. And then we have chain type stuff, which when you say it like this, this actually retrieves all of the documents, which isn't always the best, but this is what just I'm going to use for this example. We're going to say response equals QA dot invoke. And the query is going to be the question that we're going to ask it from this function. We're just going to print that we're done and then return the response. Okay, so what I've done is I have three different breakpoints. You can skip ahead if you just want to see the results of the questions I asked, but I just want to show you kind of how it works and we can see uh, these object variables and what they're holding. So we're, we're right here. We stopped at the text splitter. So we have the loader and the raw documents. We, we have this is the question that we have. So the raw documents, these are all of the documents that are in the AutoGen repository that we loaded. So for instance, there's, I just, I just picked one. So this is the 22nd document that it uploaded. So if I hit view here, I chose, I just, I, I picked this out. So image URLs are replaced with an image token. So then on the, on their GitHub, we can see which file that this is a part of. So back on here, this is a part of the code utils.py file. So this is just showing us that all the files that are in GitHub are loaded into that raw documents object. And it looks like there are 99 plus 349 I can't really do math, so let's just say 450. So there's 450 right now, okay? But now the next thing we're gonna do is get down to this print, we're gonna get down to this print statement, and we're gonna see how many documents there are after we use the text splitter. Okay, so now we have documents that we split into chunks of 1,000 by using the recursive character text splitter. Now, as you can see, there are 11,001 of these total documents in this object variable, because we split the chunks out. And then, then we'll stop down here and then we should have a vector database stored in our directory. Now on the left hand side, you can see we have a phase autogen directory holding two different files. Now what I actually had to do was I had to run this once and then it showed up. So if it doesn't show up right away, right after you say vector store .save local, don't worry, just finish the program and then come back and it should be there. Okay. That's just what happened to me. So now I have the debugger set to my vector store. Now phase .load local loads the vector store database that we have saved here because I give it because I give it the same index name and we have to give it embeddings so that we can load data from the vector store. And we have our question. Can you please give a detailed summary of what Autogen is? So we instantiate the retrieval QA, which then allows us to invoke our question onto the chain. So I'm going to go ahead and finish here. So I went ahead and completed it and it gave our response back. And I'll just paste it into Google Docs so that you can see this is a full summary of what it's gathering from the vector store, which came from the Git repository to tell us about Autogen. Okay, now I'm going to use a different question where I want to actually write Python code for us and basically give us a group chat. And look, it was able to give us full Python code for all of these agents. So as a function to initialize the agents given a config list, we have the config list from JSON file, uh, initialize the agents. So this is where it actually initializes the agents. We create a group chat, group chat manager, 
And then we have the user proxy initiate the chat with the manager, and then ask the question, what are the top five longest rivers in the world? Okay, something I just want to show you and clarify that this isn't perfect, right? Maybe we could use a different vector database. Maybe we can use the way, the way we split the characters. There could be some things different here that can optimize this and make this more efficient. Some of the things that I have asked it, it just simply comes back and says it doesn't know anything about. And that's okay. This was, an, this was a really good example because you can ask it questions about Autogen and it does give you back responses as we just seen. Okay, so this was a really good example of how we're going to start using Langchain for other services in the future. You know, there are a lot of other tools where we can use Wikipedia source, we can take in PDFs and then have and then give the LLM context about the PDF so we can create something like a quiz creator. And this could be a lot, especially if you haven't used Langchain before. But I think this could be a good starter. As you can see, if a model doesn't have any context about a certain topic, you could even take uh, Langchain documents itself because you can take in there's because there's another tool that uses HTML parsing and then you can give that as context to a model and now all of a sudden you have an LLM that knows about Langchain you can ask it questions like we just created with Autogen. I hope you found this project useful. Here's some more Autogen videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.